Hello everyone, Weather well, Jamaica here. Welcome to this updated video on the weather across Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. It is Thursday evening, July 25, 2024. Now before we jump into it, please ensure that you guys like the video. I'd really appreciate it if you guys get this video up to 100 likes. If you don't know by now, that's how the YouTube algorithm works. We all like the video and then the YouTube algorithm pushes the video out to more persons who are on the path of these tropical systems so that we can keep everyone safe, especially during the peak of Atlantic hurricane season, that's August through to October. Share this video with your friends, your co-workers, your relatives, and even your church brethren, and subscribe if you haven't yet done so. Leave a comment down below letting me know what that has been like in your year recently. Also, feel free to ask any weather related question that you might have about the future of the weather in your specific area. Alright, so before we even start talking about the Atlantic where we live, we need to wrap up what's happening across the Western Pacific. We can see the visible satellite images here showing the sun coming up. Japan right here. Mainland China right here. The Philippines right here. And Taiwan right here. And we can see that we still have the clouds associated with Typhoon Gamey right here lashing portions of taiwan and southeast china as we speak and if we take a closer look at what's happening it definitely made landfall today into southeastern china and it's still doing a number on the region bringing a lot of clouds showers and thunderstorms to not only china but still across taiwan and they've already been getting flooded and even loss of life has been reported in that country as a result of the typhoon so it is definitely over land right now it's expected to move towards the north then to the northwest and then eventually die out within the next couple of days but this system has definitely done a lot of damage across the western pacific here we have a page on twitter volcoholic if you're not already following this page you need to they always post when it comes to these systems and the damage that they do definitely a good tool for you guys to use so this posted here at 5 21 a.m this morning highlighting the aftermath of typhoon gamey in the philippines i remember where the philippines is located the typhoon is right here and the philippines is way down here and it definitely brought a lot of flooding to the region even although it didn't directly cross over there it definitely brought a lot of damage definitely brought a lot of flooding look at the damage that was done as seen in this video it's just ridiculous and if we also take a look at this post that was made here 4 29 a.m highlighting the heavy rainfall that took place in taiwan on thursday we know that they are one day ahead of us look at that car being swept away and cars inundated in general it's just a very bad situation right there in Kao Siyong if I'm not butchering that name in Taiwan all because of the typhoon we even had one video right here showing severe flooding in Kao Siyong in Taiwan due to typhoon gaming I wonder if the Tesla survived and they're definitely driving a Tesla but let's try not to do that with your vehicle maybe the tesla can handle it but still don't drive through flooded roadways we know it only takes only a couple of inches for the vehicle to start floating away don't try this at home at all so that's it for the western pacific until something else develops you can also find a lot more videos talking about the damage and the death regarding uh, gaming on youtube if you just search it on youtube you'll definitely see filter it out to show the today or the hours ago and you'll definitely find what's going on regarding that system and the damage that is done across the philippines china and taiwan and you can see right here that on the eastern pacific side considering that we have mexico right here and we have jamaica right here the eastern pacific has started to ramp up they've actually had a new name storm but if you haven't heard by now that's the name on the list not really a crazy storm at all just a batch of clouds we even see it dying out 
quickly right here fizzling out it's definitely going to be moving over some cooler waters soon the track has it pushing towards the west still maintaining tropical storm status by friday but by saturday we see that it should be weakening to a tropical depression as of right now it's packing maximum sustained winds of 60 miles per hour as it moves towards the west at 14 miles per hour and we know the eastern pacific is different from the atlantic so they have their own specific names over there the first name was aleta that's finished bud is next and it's currently well it's currently in progress so the next name is Carlotta, Daniel, Emilia. Look at all of these names. Very interesting. But clearly we have different names compared to what the Atlantic usually uses. On another note, we need to highlight some of the expert insights of what's happening across the Atlantic. This is Andy Hazelton. He's a scientist. He works at NOAA. That has to do with the Hurricane Center in general. And he highlighted the fact that the Euro model is starting to back off of development and GFS is still not biting on the development. He highlighted some maps here and he highlighted the fact that because of the dry air, it's making it tougher for the tropical wave that's coming off of Africa to develop. This is why it's important not to be looking at the model so far out in advance until the hurricane center has highlighted something because there's been so much hype all over twitter all over youtube person saying oh something is coming and it might be close to africa well close to the bahamas and florida coming off of africa developing as we begin august and look at that the euro model that was actually the first model to show that something could be coming is starting to back off on development saying that oh it's not gonna bother happen i changed my mind <laughs> so even Eric Blake right here hit the nail on the head with what I'm saying. This is a map of the GFS model. And it is showing July 21 across the Eastern Pacific. Just for reference, we have Mexico right here. We have the Southern United States and Florida right here. Central America right here in general. So we can see that as of July 21, this is the condition just some moisture associated with the intertropical convergent zone and numerous tropical waves that push from the atlantic into the caribbean but i wanted to take a look at what it was showing a couple weeks ago this was july 7 and this was the forecast for july 21 and it actually showed three possible tropical cyclones forming look at the spin and the L that represents areas of low pressure. So it, it was forecasting 336 hours out, far out in advance, that's more than seven days. And it highlighted that there would have been at least three systems forming, but we saw that as time went on, nothing actually formed. The only thing that we got so far is bud, and that's basically it. This is why it's important not to be looking out at these maps so far out in advance he hit the nail on the head with this post he stated here's why you don't pay too close at, of attention to the 14 day gfs actual versus forecast from a few days ago fail it's not only the gfs even the euro so this is why it's very important to always look at what the hurricane center is highlighting and if they haven't highlighted anything Best believe that it's not going to be happening. As a matter of fact, there have been times in the past where they've highlighted things and uh, we see the models back off and then, oh, it jumps up to a 50% chance, then it's back down to a 20% chance and then they scrap that system all in all. So it's interesting to use these models as like a kind of crystal ball, but don't hype it up too much and start the fear mongering at all because we know how these systems can bring a lot of anxiety on another note we have a post here from ben noel if you remember in may he actually made a post highlighting that we would have had some rising ear some upward motion in june and that was what brought beryl to form across our neck of the woods and he made a post today 
So, by the way, if you haven't followed him as yet, please ensure that you do. He's a meteorologist at the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research in New Zealand. And from time to time, he makes some very accurate posts that you can't afford to miss. He stated here, and by the way, he posted this at 6.30, 4 a.m. this morning. Atlantic hurricane season. A very favorable configuration for tropical storms and hurricanes is forecast to take shape during August. During the first and second week of next month, a convective pulse is expected to cross the Atlantic, strengthen and become slow moving over Africa, lasting through most of August. This should lead to greatly induced wind shear, enhance the level of moisture across the Atlantic basin, and reduce the amount of dust, all while invigorating the African easterly wave train. Factors that support tropical development. Once source of uncertainty however is the level of activity in the eastern pacific should a rising cell become persistent there it could steal some of the thunder from the atlantic and he's highlighting this map right here we know the greens represent rising air not talking about the greens within the orange the orange right there and the deeper greens within the orange is actually sinking here we're talking about the greens and the blues that's the rising air that's the upward motion when we have air rising we have more thunderstorms forming we have more tropical waves becoming tropical depressions tropical storms hurricanes when we have sinking air like what we're having right now across the atlantic we have less in the way of tropical waves thunderstorms forming and whatnot storms hurricanes and that's exactly what we're experiencing right now. So let's actually look at the timestamps right here. So this is valid for July 26 to August 2. And we're starting to see some of the greens come into portions of the Central Pacific, sections of the Eastern Pacific, sections of Africa, even the blues in there as well. So that represents some upward motion. We're starting to get in on more of the sinking air across the western pacific that just had these typhoons so this is valid for july 26 to august to keep in mind that today is july 25 so we're not going to be noticing any of this until a couple of days have passed but as we continue to go out in time look at august 2 to august 9 we start to get even more robust with the rising air and this was what he was referring to this is the eastern pacific and look we have the darker greens and blues in there that represents the more in the way of rising air so it could indicate we could get some more storms forming during uh, that time period a lot more thunderstorms and it's also highlighting that this could steal the thunder of the atlantic because you know if the eastern pacific is more robust to the activity it might not focus so much of their attention on the atlantic and that's a good thing in general you can also see some of that across africa we know africa is responsible for sending us these tropical waves as well and then as we head into august 9 to august 16 we start to see it dwindling down across the eastern pacific but look at the darker shades of blues across africa that indicate where we're going to be having more of the tropical waves coming in it's really setting up for a bad situation it's even uh, there again during the time period for august 16 to august 24 we'll see exactly what unfolds we have to stay updated either way and i'll definitely be here to keep you all posted as of right now the u.s national hurricane center seven day graphical tropical weather outlook is not showing much in the way of anything no tropical cyclone activity is expected within the next seven days as of their 7.21 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time update, which is actually 6.21 p.m. Jamaica time. If we take a look, however, at their Atlantic weather discussion, they've highlighted the tropical waves as usual. One tropical wave is currently across the eastern Atlantic. Another tropical wave right now passing through the Lesser Antilles, that's portions of the Leeward and Windward Islands. And if we take a look at the surface map, we can see them right here. Tropical wave right here across the Eastern Caribbean. The other tropical wave right here across the waters of the Eastern Main Development Region. And we can also see the ridge of high pressure that we know is responsible 
we're sending all of these waves across the main development region into the Caribbean and we have a lot of dust in the atmosphere as well coming off of the Sahara Desert pushing westward if we take a look at the visible satellite images of the Atlantic before the Sun went down we can actually see the clouds associated with the tropical wave not as robust at all clouds associated associated with numerous troughs as we can see across the greater Antilles clouds associated with another tropical wave across the western Caribbean Central America right there Jamaica even gotten us some of the rainfall today as well and we can see the clouds squashed to the south of the main development region associated with the intertropical convergence zone as usual we'll be talking more about the rest of the Caribbean weather later on let us focus our attention on the prediction that was made in yesterday's video about the weather across Jamaica for today Thursday July 25 it was stated that parts of eastern Jamaica would have received some morning rainfall then the rainfall would have affected sections of some central and western parishes during Thursday afternoon and just for reference we know eastern parishes we're talking about those parishes in the county of Surrey so Portland, St. Thomas, Kingston, St. Andrew central parishes then we're talking about those parishes in the county of Middlesex so St. Anne, St. Mary, Manchester, Clarendon, St. Catherine well western parishes then we're talking about those parishes in the county of Cornwall so Hanover, St. James, Trelawney, Westmoreland and St. Elizabeth and what ended up happening as early as 10 35 a.m the visible satellite image was posted here on our twitter page by the way these posts aren't only made here on our twitter page at weather jamaica but they are made on our instagram page at weather.jamaica on our tiktok page at weather jamaica and on our facebook page at weather jamaica 876 so if you have one of those social media platforms please ensure that you follow us there as you make posts throughout the day that you can't afford to miss so the visible satellite image was posted at around that time and it highlighted the clouds coming into section of eastern Jamaica bring some isolated thunderstorms to those sections of the island so definitely sections of Portland might have spilled into sections of St. Mary sections of St. Thomas got in on the action and we also see these sparkling yellow dots that will now represent some amount of lightning strikes if not lightning flashes on Thursday morning then as the day progressed we got to the 12.05 p.m. infrared satellite image that was also posted highlighting some sparkling white dots even though we're not seeing a lot of thunderstorms across the central portion of the island there was indeed some isolated thunderstorms taking place there even though the heaviest activity was across the east where we see these high cold cloud tops as represented by the greens the yellows the oranges the reds we even increased the amount of lightning flashes across section of st thomas Kingston St. Andrew more so northern St. Andrew than anything else and we know that's representative of some amount of lightning flashes if not lightning strikes then later on in the afternoon another post was made 2 or 5 p.m. and it showed how majority of the activity definitely pushed from east to west especially when we had that diurnal convection so wherever that ear piled up we had the thunderstorms lashing section of some central and especially western parishes in Jamaica there were even some persons who reported freak storm like conditions across the western portions of the island and I'm sure that many of them are indeed grateful especially considering that the rains brought a bit of a cool down in the temperatures and we definitely have confirmation from some of our followers here on our Twitter page Dale the 1876 stating quick heavy shower in Kingston a little after noon Still a little overcast this was posted four hours ago Lois Clark rained about 11 a.m. on the north coast overcast no legal skater leg shade Kerr stating at around 2 30 heavy rain in Montego Bay reduced to a drizzle now a sick and tired individual stating heavy rain in Christiana here and now stating enough enough rain at Portland even here we are Joel Phillips stating very hot in Old Harbor, Jamaica. Life with Tia stating heavy rain in Westmoreland. Claude Russell overcast with thunder in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, Central Jamaica. So it didn't rain that much in Spanish Town, but it definitely got the clouds and the thunderstorms. Well, the sound of lightning and thunder. Amelia forever. It poured like crazy in Montego Bay a few minutes ago. And this was posted two hours ago at about 4.30. 
2 p.m. So they were still getting nailed even past the 2 o'clock post. We have Drini RJ here on our Facebook page confirming the rainfall in her area. Thunder and lightning. Shade Atkinson, rain in Westmoreland, Kiva Gray, raining in time and patience, thunder in the distance. Deborah Tyndale, light rain with breeze in Newport, Manchester. And then we also had Susan Simpson here, thunderstorm now in Portland. Gavon Thompson, rain in Maypen. Olive Drisdale, rainy Portland. Angelique Francis, right now it is raining very hard in Westmoreland. Ivory or Ivory Reed, nothing in the Sunshine City. Heat shall kill us, unfortunately. That's why it's called the Sunshine City. Even on our third page, we had a comment coming in from Dante Hart Philia. Yes, we have a third page. You know, third is basically the same, or almost the same as Instagram, but it's kind of you know looking like Twitter in a way. So Dante Hart Philia are Philia stating this is what's happening at Sangster's International Airport right now and he posted some images showing the shelf thunderstorm clouds right here over the airport you can definitely see that it was setting up for a very bad situation so this was the, the before picture and this was the after picture showing the heavy rainfall that was taking place after the clouds moved over with the rain shaft so they definitely got nailed some decent rainfall in montego bay and we even have uh, some more comments coming in here on our instagram page this is red days if i'm not mistaken was raining on Mullions road not too long ago touchy three underscore xcv just started in constant spring br bxrb dot underscore rica in west right now rain of fall Portland underscore mountain underscore paradise. West Portland had rain from mid morning until mid afternoon. Andrew Fisher 40 stating got some rain earlier. Tommy dot TW Montego Bay getting rain. Even on our TikTok page, we had comments coming in. Young Mong of four kids. Few drops overcast sky. Thunder Manchester. Bright eyes. Rain in Portland. And if we take a look at C Jamaica's YouTube channel, showing the halfway tree cam from about 12.28 p.m. I was actually in halfway tree today. Luckily, I left before it started raining. I actually had a dentist appointment. And they definitely had some decent rainfall. Some that looks like what moderate to slightly heavy rainfall, if I'm not mistaken. Persons going about their business, windshield wipers on. Some person definitely getting wet and this was about 12 28 p.m by the way if you'd like to see more streams like this you can go over to see jamaica's youtube channel they show live streams halfway tree the kingston harbor the city view across roads the bagua gorge you name it and they're planning on you know increasing the amount of cameras across jamaica so subscribe from now so they definitely got some rainfall today just as predicted in yesterday's video it was predicted for eastern central and western jamaica and we're happy that portion of kingston and st andrew got in on some of the rainfall and this was exactly what took place today we had the cloud coming in from the east the low level clouds that is then we had them building especially during the afternoon into cumulonimbus nimbus cloud and then we had the high cold cloud house being blown off towards the east as usual and we can see it all even better on the infrared satellite images right here the high cold cloud tops as represented by the blues greens yellows oranges reds and blacks and we saw all of that being blown off towards the east which explains the thunderstorms and overcast skies that we had especially across section of some northern parishes in jamaica but section of most parishes got an amount of rainfall not everywhere in every parish but sections of most parish got some amount of rainfall today as majority of this activity pushed westward so the upper level clouds pushed eastward but the low level clouds with the thunderstorms pushed from east to west across the island so it's all about the low level flow the low level flow is uh, very important and if we take a look right now at the very latest infrared satellite image Let's reload these images so that we have the latest to see 
the current conditions so this is as of 55 minutes past the hour considering that it is 7 or 5 p.m right now this is the image as of 6 55 p.m we can see the majority of the clouds have definitely cleared out just a few or high level clouds here and there across the kingdom of the island not much rainfall within them at all and we can see the latest cuban doppler radar images confirming that so we're reloading these images right now so that we have the very latest it should show the 8 p.m eastern standard time doppler radar image considering that this is cuba yes they're using eastern standard time so there we have it 8 pm and we can actually see a, a little dot of rain right there on the north coast maybe to the north of saint anne northeast of trelawney if i'm not mistaken that's basically it maybe a little spot of rain right there to the south of saint thomas to the south of kingston and we also see some leftover rainfall from today's thunderstorms right there off the west coast of the island not much to see here at all Either way, we're indeed grateful that we got some amount of rainfall today. And if we take a look at the latest live cam showing crossroads, persons going about their business, not much to see here at all. It's definitely fair. Look at the hills of St. Andrew. Definitely starting to clear out as we head into the night so that we can see the stars. If we take a look, at the temperatures right now we can see we have 27 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay it could be cooler than that especially considering that they got some rainfall today 28 degrees Celsius in Kingston and by about 4 a.m. on Friday temperature should it down to about 26 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay 25 degrees Celsius in Kingston if we take a look at the temperature forecast for tomorrow this map from the GFS is showing 18z on friday which is actually 1 pm on friday and we see jamaica right here embedded in some yellow colors and we can see from the key on the right the yellow colors are representative of up to one degree celsius above normal temperatures for the month of july i don't know the normal temperatures for the month of july across jamaica are about 91 degrees fahrenheit when we take a look at the thermometer and when we actually calculate it 91 degrees Fahrenheit is about the same as 32.7 degrees Celsius so we should be receiving anywhere from 32 to 33 degrees Celsius at most for Jamaica's temperature on a Friday so please ensure that you stay out of the sun during peak hours and you stay hydrated another thing that we're gonna be noting tomorrow compared to today today we had blue skies when we had the sunshine tomorrow we're not gonna be seeing that much of a blue in the sky at all considering that the saharan dust is definitely gonna be here but look at all of these browns that's gonna be plaguing portions of the eastern to the central caribbean anywhere from the southern bahamas for 2 p.m on friday definitely gonna be getting hazy skies eastern cuba jamaica the cayman islands haiti dominican republic puerto rico the leeward and windward islands even portion of northern south america the abc islands gonna be getting in on the saharan dust and we see that majority of the northern caribbean islands are gonna be getting the brunt of it with these darker shades of browns so definitely some hazy skies some hazy horizons not as clear as it would normally be there's definitely gonna be some persons with asthma or sinusitis issues god forbid so please ensure that you all have your meds handy because we know all of this is coming from the desert and it's pushing from east to west and it doesn't seem like there's going to be a break anytime soon one little break right here we'll see how soon that gets here if we take a look at the wave forecast for tomorrow not much change we still have the highest waves right there to the south of haiti and jamaica the two meter wave as are represented by the purples and the rest of the basin getting anywhere from 0 0.5 for meter wave heights to 1 meter wave, well, to 1.5 meter wave heights as indicated by the, what we see on the key on the bottom right. And that's because the winds are going to be strongest to the south of Haiti, Jamaica, Hispaniola in general, the Dominican Republic, to the north of the ABC Islands, where we see these yellows that represent up to 25 knot winds or more, while the rest of the basin getting anywhere from 5 to 10 to up to 20 knot winds and we see the general direction for these winds coming out of the east 
all because of this ridge of high pressure right here we know the ridges of high pressure send everything from east to west and on the north side of the ridge from west to east unfortunately we can't get a, a, a ridge of high pressure somewhere down here that would cause a westerly flow because we know if we get a westerly flow across jamaica just like how we see most of the afternoon thunderstorms pushing from east west and affecting section of western jamaica during the afternoon especially it would be the opposite so we'd have the rainfall across eastern jamaica but it doesn't work like that at all the only way we can get a westerly flow across the island is if we have maybe a, a low pressure system causing that kind of flow across the island or weaker weaker than normal high pressure winds either way as it relates to the actual wind forecast for jamaica we see that the waters to the south of the island or the south coast in general is going to be getting the highest wind anywhere from 20 to 30 knot winds north coast maybe anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20 knot winds we see the general direction from the east so if we're going to be getting some rainfall definitely coming off of the sea to affect sections of st thomas portland maybe even spilling into st mary kingston and st andrew hopefully but we also see that the air is going to be piling up more so across northern and western jamaica so we might get some more rainfall when we have that daytime heating that diurnal convection those low level clouds building and forming into mid level rain clouds if not upper level cumulus nimbus clouds so definitely some thunderstorms are in the forecast again and with the upper level wind still coming in from the west across the island all courtesy of this trough that's across the region we're definitely going to be seeing more of a pattern like this with the high cold cloud dust being blown off towards the east and if we actually take a look at the one hour total forecast in terms of rainfall we can see that as of 8 a.m eastern standard time which is actually 7 a.m jamaica time we're starting to get in on the rainfall on friday and where do we see it for eastern jamaica we see the blues are representing rainfall across the kingdom of st thomas portland right there we see it on both the euro and the gfs mall so look out for that rainfall in the morning then look at this this is as of 11 a.m eastern standard time which is actually 10 a.m jamaica time and look at that both the euro and the gfs malls are still in consensus but there's going to be some morning rainfall for the east the euro a bit more robust trying to incorporate section of some northern parishes in there maybe section of some central parishes too but we're more inclined to believe what both of them are showing and for now both of them are showing that as for 10 a.m on friday it should be eastern jamaica that's getting that rainfall and then as we head into 3 p.m eastern standard time which is actually 2 p.m jamaica time we still see the consensus for rainfall across the east on both models but look at where we start to see the contrast we see the contrast with central and western jamaica the euro showing more so southern jamaica in it and some portions of some northern parishes and western parishes as well but we're more inclined to believe what both of them are showing and both of them are showing that eastern northern and western jamaica are going to be getting in on that rainfall keep in mind that this is valid for 3 p.m eastern standard time which is actually 2 p.m jamaica time so there's definitely going to be some rainfall more so in the afternoon across eastern northern and western jamaica so let's work with that and even by 5 p.m eastern standard time which is actually 4 p.m jamaica time we still have some leftover rainfall across portions of the island more so eastern and western jamaica than anything else either way both accumulated precipitation forecast maps are in consensus that it's going to be raining somewhere across jamaica within the next 24 hours keep in mind that both of these maps are showing all the rainfall that's expected from now up until 3z on saturday when you calculate that that's up to at least 10 p.m on friday so this is all the rainfall that's expected and we see that there's some contrast with the amount of rainfall that's expected across the majority of the island but there is definitely some agreement that eastern jamaica is going to be getting in on the rainfall as well see the euro is showing a bit more than the gfs the reds in there may be close to an inch of rainfall gfs not so much but definitely going to be getting in on some more rainfall for the east just like what we saw earlier it makes sense that most of the rainfall is accumulated here in the east but gfs doing gfs things northern and western jamaica making sense with the low level flow euro not making much sense but we'll see if it actually wins tomorrow central and western jamaica getting some of the rainfall either way we'll take it we're in the month of july we're in one of the driest months of the year to be honest 
as we can see right here the kingston and montego bay bar graph showing the rainfall throughout the year kingston's bar graph at the top montego bay's bar graph at the bottom and clearly we see that during the month of july we have less rainfall in july we have up to 50 millimeters of rainfall expected for the entire month in kingston in montego bay we have up to what 3.1 inches of rainfall during the month in that area you can do the math yourself considering that we have our rainfall distribution map right here showing rainfall from inches to millimeters you know that one inch of rainfall represents up to 25 millimeters of rainfall two inches of rainfall up to 50 millimeters of rainfall so you can do the math yourself and you can also visit weatherandclimate.com to find out about your specific parish all right so that is it for the forecast across jamaica let us focus our attention on the rest of the caribbean so we didn't have much and we have rainfall across the northeastern caribbean today the leeward islands was definitely void of any rainfall most of the rainfall was right there across sections of trinidad and tobago sections of suriname french guyana venezuela colombia panama costa rica nicaragua honduras belize section of guatemala right there haiti dominican republic section of the bahamas gotten on some isolated shores even section of the southern and eastern united states because if we take a look at the doppler radar images of the northeastern caribbean right now we don't see much happening and if we take a look from earlier today there wasn't much to see here one of the driest days that they've ever had and trust me that's all because of the very dusty air that they're experiencing as we speak but if we take a look south of there we can see that there's definitely some amount of rainfall coming right now into portions of saint vincent and the grenadines some of that might have gotten into portion of barbados earlier today not much across barbados right now we can see some rainfall coming into portions of martinique maybe some rainfall hitting or missing southern saint lucia and we can also see some rainfall coming through to big or no some of this rainfall could definitely come in from the east to affect section of trinidad later this evening if you take a look at the wide of doppler radar images we can see some rainfall as we speak across section of western portion of florida section of the yucatan peninsula so northern northwestern guatemala section of belize definitely gotten on some rainfall today section of nicaragua some rainfall passing to the north of the abc islands as we speak some rainfall right there across sections of french guyana section of suriname maybe northeastern suriname getting in on some isolated showers right now but as it relates to what's expected within the next 24 hours not much at all especially across the leeward island and the northern windward island little to no rainfall is definitely expected and trust me that has a lot to do with the saharan dust so we can see that there's definitely some rainfall as represented by the dark greens the yellows oranges reds for a section of florida within the next 24 hours keep in mind that both of these maps from the euro and the gfs are showing all the rainfall that's expected from now up until 10 p.m on a friday and we can see that there's definitely some rainfall in store for a section of the bahamas cuba jamaica the cayman islands sections of anywhere from grenada southward to grenada trinidad and tobago venezuela guyana suriname french guyana sections of colombia panama costa rica nicaragua honduras el salvador guatemala belize the yucatan peninsula even section of the cayman islands getting in on some of that rainfall cuba the bahamas florida if i didn't mention as yet even section of haiti and the dominican republic and we see that both the euro and the jefferson mars are in consensus with this forecast and we know that when they're in consensus like this the chances of it actually happening are much higher all right so that's it for today thanks for watching